Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I will show you how to make the blooming photo frame. This is an easy and really fast gift to make if you want to make something handmade but don't have a whole lot of time to make it. And for this project, you'll need some yarn. You also need a hook and a pair of scissors and your frame. I want to talk a little bit about the frame and then I'll tell you a little bit about the yarn that I used. This frame here is just a simple, inexpensive wooden frame, and I've taken it apart. It has these little metal clips that hold your photo in place. And this particular one, I think I got it for like a dollar or two in the craft store. It was in the aisle where all the unpainted wooden things are. And it didn't have glass or anything in it. Um, if you want something a little bit nicer, um, you can get one that's already um, in the photo frame aisle if you prefer glass. Um, and then just to hold the frame, it came with this little dowel rod. And you just put it into this little pre-drilled hole. And it kind of just sits like that. So let's get started. We're going to get started on the frame part. It's covered in yarn, and the yarn is simply just wrapped around the frame. So for your yarn, because I wanted to make this an extra fast gift, I used super bulky yarn. This is Lion Brand's Hometown USA, and I used an N hook. However, you can use any yarn you want for this project. Just check your yarn label and make sure that you have the appropriate hook for your yarn. It'll have the recommendation right on the label. So we're going to begin, we're going to do the frame in purple, and then we're going to add a pink rose and a green leaf. So we'll do those last. So let me get those aside and we'll get our scissors aside. So all you do is I actually tried to single crochet around this frame and I really like the way the wrapped yarn looked better. It's just a personal preference. You could try doing a single crochet if you like. But you just wanna go ahead and tie the yarn right onto the frame. And this is a great way to use up some extra yarn you have laying around. And just make sure that you do it in beautiful bright colors for someone if it's a gift or maybe their favorite colors or to match a room that you're doing it for. So we just tied a knot and you want to put the knot on the back. So we're just going to begin by wrapping the yarn and we have a tail here. So just like in crocheting you want to kind of hold this tail along your work and it'll weave it in as you go. So we're just going to begin by wrapping the yarn and you want to be neat about this and just put it right next to it. You don't want it to crisscross or anything like that. It will look much nicer if everything's parallel and side by side. So we're just going to begin by wrapping the yarn. And you can just send the yarn ball right through the middle. Wrap. And this is a great project if you want to work on with kids because you're just wrapping the yarn around your frame. You might want to scrunch it up right there in the corner because you're going to be putting lots of yarn into the corner there. Just send the ball right through the center of the hole like that. Okay. I started at the corner. You can really start wherever you want. See it's starting to cover our frame. And if you want to, you can leave a space. I'm going to do mine in solid purple. But if you want to, you can also kind of skip over like this and leave a space and then come back in with another color and kind of make a striped sequence. I'm going to do mine solid though, just because I'm using the roses on the bottom. You can make yours without the roses. It's totally up to you. So I'm going to leave you for a moment 
and let you wrap your yarn around your frame as well. And I'm gonna finish wrapping this yarn all the way around the frame. And then we'll join back up when we're finished and start on the next part. So I've come around the first corner and I just wanted to point out really quick that if when you're doing the corner and you're getting a little bit of a gap there, that's okay. Just keep wrapping and kind of push it over as you go. And if you're still getting some spacing in between, when we're finished, we can flip this over and put a little dot of glue, some fabric glue or some hot glue, and just kind of use that to hold it, everything in place. And I also wanted to show you, as you're wrapping the yarn, let's, I'll wrap one and show you. See this, this gap in the corner? It slides around a little bit. But that's okay, just keep going. We can glue it later. So as we're wrapping this, sending it through, if you notice I'm holding it with my thumb to keep everything lined up as well. Just like that and pushing it over a little as you go. Okay, so I'm in the home stretch. I'm just finishing up the very last little bit of the frame. And you'll want to kind of overlap this. So see how I have it now covered. Just want to do a few more wraps around just to make sure that it doesn't come apart and leave a gap. So now we're all finished. We can flip the frame over. We have our end here. And you want to just cut, leaving a little tail. There we go, okay. So we have our tail, and then you'll just wanna take it, make sure it's nice and snug there, and just pull up one of these loops around the back, tuck a loop of your tail in like that. Let me zoom in a little so you can see. And then bring your tail through it. We're just making a knot. Just like that. Then you can tighten it. And I'm just going to put another knot just to make sure everything is nice and secure. And you don't want to leave anything loose because it'll start to unravel a bit. So everything's nice and tight now. And I'm going to go ahead and cut my tail a little bit shorter. It's pretty short, see? And you can take a tapestry needle or you can use your fingers if you don't have one on hand. And just run it along here. I'm looking for it with my other finger. There we go. Just want to run it along the side there. It's a little tricky because it's we've wrapped it pretty snug. There we go. And then, see it pops back out on the other side, we'll take our scissors and just cut that and it disappears. So let's flip our frame over. I just want to straighten everything out. There we go. And again, the corners have slipped around a little. Well, this one hasn't. But when we get the, the glue or the hot glue, whatever you choose to use later, we'll fix those. Okay, that's totally normal. So if we flip it over, you can still see our clips. You might need to move the yarn around them a little just to expose them. There we go. And if you look, I'm not sure what end we left off on here. I think it's, oh yes, there's our little hole. We can put our our dowel rod back in later for it to, to sit up. However, you can also prop this, just prop it up against something too if you're not into the dowel rod. Sometimes even with no yarn wrapped around it and just a regular photo frame with just a very lightweight photo inside, the dowel rods still kind of fall off. So a lot of times with these kinds of frames I just prop them up against something. So let's move on to the flower part.
and then we're going to put everything together. Okay, to make the rose, we're just going to put a slip knot on our hook. Wrap the yarn around your fingers, reach in, bring up a loop, and we're going to chain 12. To make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and pull it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Next, in the fourth chain from the hook, you're going to work two double crochets. This loop here does not count. So one, two, three, four. To work a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Then we'll work another one in the same chain, just like that. Next, in each chain all the way across, we're going to work three double crochets in each chain. So in the next chain, one, two, and three, all in that same chain. Next chain, one, two, and three, next chain, one, two, and three, I'm just using some scraps here that I had on hand. It's a great way to use up some scraps. Next chain. One, two, three. Next chain. One, two, and three. Pull some more yarn out. Okay, we just have a few chains left. So in the next chain, one, two, and three, second to last chain, whoops, there we go, one, two, and three, and then in that very last chain, One, two, and three. So the crochet part of our rose is complete. What you can do is just trim. You can put the pink yarn aside, and then we'll just fasten off like that. So it doesn't look very rose-like at the moment. So we're going to just coil this up, and now it looks like a rose. So next what you can do is take one of your tails, thread your tapestry needle, a little tail like that, hold your rose how you want it to look, and you can flip it. And I like to bring my tapestry needle, weave it in and out till you get to the center of the back. Come up through the middle and back down. You only need to do this a few times. You don't want to um, over stitch it. 
because it'll flatten it out a little bit, but you don't want to, I guess you could say, understitch it because you want it to stay together as well. So I did a few passes with that tail. Let's take the other tail. I like to just stitch it with both little tails here. Then you can just come up a little. And I, this edge to me looks a little floppy. So let's come in through there. Okay, just a few well-placed stitches is all it takes. Then flip your rows over. And we're going to be, you could, you could try and sew this on here. These are very tight, so it might be a little hard. So I would recommend, if you'd like, you can sew them, but I would recommend using some fabric glue or some hot glue. We're going to use hot glue in our tutorial. So you just have these little tails. If you want to sew them, leave the tails on. If you want to glue them, cut the tails nice and snug up against the rows so it's nice and flat. So we'll put that aside and let's get started on our leaf. To make the leaf, you're going to take the same hook. We're going to use the green yarn. We're going to put a slip knot on our hook, same way we did with the rose. And this time, we're going to chain four. And again, I'm just using a little bit of scraps that I had on hand. So one, two, three, and four just like that. Now on the chain farthest from your hook, you're going to work a slip knot. That will create the ring. And kind of open that up. We're going to be working lots of stitches into the center of the ring, so I like to open it up. I also wanted to mention, because we're going to be working this in the round, your little tail here hold along the edge of this ring, and you can work that tail in as you crochet your stitches, and it's one less little tail that you have to sew in or weave in later. So we're going to begin by working six double crochets into the center of the ring. The yarn is, my plies are coming apart a little. There we go. One, two, three, let's move the, the yarn, is, the little yarn ball is following me around here, and four, five, and six. So this will be the bottom of our leaf. Next, we're going to work four single crochets. To work a single crochet, insert your hook into the center, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. So that's one, two, again we're holding our tail, three, and four. To make the point or the top peak of our leaf, we're going to work a treble crochet. Wrap yarn around hook twice, one, two. Insert your hook into the center, bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the next two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. It'll look kind of like that. And again, I'm pushing everything over a little just so I can fit all these stitches into the center of the ring. To finish our leaf, we're going to work four more single crochets. One, two, three, and four. We're going to finish our leaf by joining with a slip stitch to close our round. So just insert your hook. There we go. Bring a loop, bring this loop through that loop. Just like that. Our leaf is complete, so now we can trim and fasten off. 
and this leaf you might want to shape it up a little bit kind of pinch that point the tail that we worked in pull that tight take your scissors trim that off and we want to weave this tail in as well normally for sewing it to something you would leave this tail intact and just use that tail to kind of sew it to something but again I'll be gluing this on so we're just going to weave this in and trim it so thread your tapestry needle flip your leaf over so the back side is facing you and then just weave it in one direction I like to come also in the opposite direction take your scissors trim and your leaf is complete I need to shape it up a little more after weaving okay so let's come back to our frame it's time I'm going to zoom out just a little so you can see the whole frame it's time to get everything together so what you want to do if you're using the dowel rod a little hole locate the little hole so that's going to be the bottom of our frame and then you just want to figure out where you want your stuff to be I'm going to put mine along the bottom here kind of like that or we could put the leaf sort of along the bottom I think I, think I like it pointing upward just like that so at this point what you want to do if you're using hot glue is plug it in and let it heat up a little bit and then we'll reconvene and glue it all together okay so I went ahead and fixed our corners and I have one left so I can show you so what you want to do is kind of straighten everything out on your corner flip it over and then I've plugged my hot glue gun in it's a rather ancient hot glue gun I've had it for a very 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 long time and I like to take a piece of tin foil and not paper or anything because it it can go through um, or it's it's really hot I just don't feel comfortable using a piece of paper but anyway I like to use a little square of tin foil under my hot glue gun to kind of catch all this mess they sell fancy trays and things but tin foil works fine and it would when it gets too gluey you can just toss it so anyway what I did to fix the corners because you get a little bit of sliding when you're wrapping this yarn is just take a dot of hot glue and my hot glue gun makes creaking sounds when I squirt it on there because it's very old. So I also have a chopstick. I always save chopsticks and the wooden kind that you get with food or whatever. And this will save your fingers. You can use a dowel rod or something like that. But I love keeping a couple of chopsticks with my hot glue gun and my little tray. I keep it all in a a big Ziploc bag together with my glue sticks. So we've put a little blob on the back side here and then we're just going to slide the yarn right over top of that glue. Just like that. And then you can take the glue kind of kind of like spread it on there like to paint it sort of. And because this is fuzzy yarn we have like a little mess going on. Just twirl it a little bit and it'll it'll come off. So then flip it back over and you can just neaten things up a bit. And our corner looks perfect. So let's locate now where that little hole was where our dowel rod went. There it is. Okay, so this here where the dowel rod goes is going to be the bottom. Okay? So I probably won't be using the dowel rod. I'll probably be propping this up against something like a mantle or a bookshelf. But you want to make sure, you're, if you're not sure the person that you're giving it to will use the dowel rod, you want to make sure that is going to be along the bottom part. So let's glue. We want to make sure this is nice and dry before we set it back on our table. So we want to figure out again where we want our roses to be. I kind of decided I'm gonna put my leaf kind of like this 
and my rose kind of like that. I thought that looked nice. So the leaf will be on the bottom, so we'll glue that one first. So we're just going to take a little bit of our hot glue and just glue it. Not too much because you don't want it to squirt out. But I'm just doing the bottom portion of that. See how I kind of twirl it in a circle to get that string off. And then you can just place your leaf wherever you want it to be. And I left the top part unglued. I think that keeps it nice and three-dimensional. So you just want to make sure that's on there pretty good. And then we can take our rose. I'm putting the rose in the corner, just like that. So we'll take our hot glue gun again and just squirt some hot glue along the back. My, my glue gun is creaking again. There we go. It's still My glue gun still works though after all this time and it works very well. So we're just going to put our rose down where we want it to go. I like it right there in that corner. Just get that one there really nice. Now you don't want to wrap this or put a photo or anything in it until the glue is completely dry. Let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. So this is our blooming photo frame. And it looks really nice. It's complete. It was a super fast project. Now, the photo part, we've these little clips are still showing. And it is a little bit bulky to put a photo there, but it'll still it'll still work. Um, you can also uh, tape something on there. Use a little masking tape or something if it's not working. But um, when I give mine as a gift, I think what I'm going to do, I have a little scrap of really pretty origami paper. I'm going to put my origami paper in there just to give it as a gift because it looks really nice like that. And that way the recipient can either put a photo and use this as a backing. They can just mount a small photo to the center or they can take it out altogether and just put their own photo in there. You could also put some kind of a quote or a message or again a photo or some kind of memento like a ticket or something like that. So again this makes a really pretty and thoughtful gift. It's completely handmade. And I just used yarn scraps, and I don't think I paid any more than a dollar or two for the actual frame. So this is a very cost-effective gift, and you can use it for just about any occasion. So that's how you make the blooming photo frame. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure and click the red subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again!